Now, the way that we have Active Directory integrated zones is that we're going to take the zone files for Active Direct or for uh, DNS, and instead of having it as a file that we replicate with zone transfers, which is unsecure and hackable and all this, we are going to have an application partition inside of Active Directory. Let me show you what the defaults are here. So if I bring up the properties of my zone, you'll notice that my zone is set for Active Directory integrated, and this is the replication scope. And you have three options. You can say replicate to all servers running in a domain controller in this domain, which is the default setting. So if you're a domain controller and you're running DNS, we'll go ahead and replicate you if you're from this domain. We can also go in and we can say uh, do it to the entire forest. So if I have multiple forests, when I create a zone that's Active Directory integrated, we want the zone replicated to all domain controllers who are DNS servers throughout the entire forest. Now, uh, when, when they first started doing Active Directory integrated zone, this was Windows 2000. And the default setting for Windows 2000 was replicate to all domain controllers, even if they're not DNS servers. <laughs> so now you have domain controllers hosting an application partition for stuff that they don't ever use for whatever reason. Maybe so you can set up replication hierarchies or some goofy thing like that. So these are the default scopes. But we can also go in and we can create a directory partition. It's called an application partition. This is where I can create a separate component inside of Active Directory. And then I can have individual servers subscribe to that particular partition. So I can limit which servers this gets replicated to. So, you know, if I have a particular zone that's only used in corporate headquarters in Tucson, and it's only used in our um, manufacturing plant in Thailand, I can just replicate it to those servers even though we just have a single domain. So let's go ahead and show you um, how we can do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire off my, uh, it's a, this is a PowerShell interface, but you can also run regular commands. We're going to do a DNS command. So we'll say DNS CMD, and we're going to go in and identify the server, and that's going to be 172.16.2.7. And then we're going to say create directory partition, C-R-E-A-T-E, D-R-E-C-T-O-R-Y, P-A-R-T-I-T-O-N. And then we're going to give it a name. And you can give it whatever name you want. You can call it Bob if you want. But best practice, in my recommendation, in Microsoft's recommendation, is name it after whatever the zone's going to be. So if I want to, I'm going to call this one Doug.mil, for example. So it's going to go through and it's going to create an Active Directory partition called Doug.mil, and it's going to do it on 172.16.2.1. This also enlists that Active Directory partition to that particular server. So now it has a copy. And to show you that, we'll go in here and I'll create a brand new Ford lookup zone. <coughs> so we'll say next. We're going to create a primary zone that's stored in Active Directory. We'll say next. And now I can say do it to this directory partition, which wasn't here before. So whatever zone I create, it's going to be stored in this Doug.mil. Now, if I go to another domain controller, uh, they don't have access to this Doug.mil partition because they're not enlisted to it yet. So even though we replicate Active Directory, we're not going to replicate this particular portion. That's why application partitions are kind of interesting because we still are able to replicate using Active Directory, which is compression. We use Kerberos authentication. It's very secure. It's encrypted, so on and so on and so on and so on. But now we can target it to specific domain controllers. I don't have another domain controller, but let me show you what the command would be to actually enlist it. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to say DNS CMD. Then we'll go through and we'll give it the IP address of the server. I'll say 172.16.2. 35, for example, and we're going to say enlist directory partition, E-N-L-I-S-T-D-A-R-E-C-T-O-R-Y, P-R-T-I-T-O-N, and then you just tell it the partition that you're going to use. Active Directory and DNS is the first application that uses Active Directory partitions. However, we're starting to see more and more stuff get stored in Active Directory. Uh, you see this a lot with Exchange. They have all of their configuration container for Exchange stored up in Active Directory. So you're going to see more of this. This is not necessarily 
a DNS only type operation, even though we're using DNS command to enlist to it. But you can also create application partitions. So if you have some application that you want to store the configuration or information inside of Active Directory, you can create Active Directory partitions and then you can populate it with LDAP and you can subscribe to it with LDAP and uh, all these other pieces are in there.